Hello. Once again. I watched a video this morning by Bjorn Bjorn Hansen, Norwegian guy. He's, he's fondly known as the Viking, a nice, intelligent, gentle guy. And he was, as usual, in the forest. Normally he, he, he does his videos in the forest drinking coffee. But this time he, he actually baked some bread by the campfire. <laughs> and it looked really nice. And it r reminded me of um, when I used to walk with my dogs in not the forest, but in the woods. Uh, there's a local there's a local wood here called it's locally known as the Broomfields, but in actual fact it's called Sweet Willow Woods. That's its official name. <clears throat> well, it's not very big, 40 acres maybe. And I enjoyed my time there with my three dogs at three different times. That's gone now. And also Bjorn's videos remind me very much of Finland. A place that I, I never ever thought that I would visit. And not only did I visit, I stayed there for a considerable amount of time. And I was fortunate enough to meet some lovely people and I was also fortunate enough to take a trip on a boat all around Finland, almost into Russia. And that was a mem memorable moment for me in my, in my life. I will never ever forget that. It's a beautiful country, lovely people, just a totally different culture. <laughs> it, it really was a culture shock for me. It really was. And I must admit, I was um, apprehensive. But, but, but I did it. I, and I'm so, so glad I did that. When <clears throat> you walk in the air forests in Finland, it is, I, I, I just, it's difficult to explain how big it is. It's massive. I think when, when Finland first joined the EU, they was asked, how many forests do you have? And, <laughs> and the politician, whoever it was, said, we only have one forest. It's the whole country, and it is. There are literally billions and billions of trees, and everyone has the right to forage. And people, people forage here. You, you probably don't realise it, but when you go to pick mushrooms or blackberries, it's, it's foraging. There, it's for blueberries, lingonberry and fungus, and there are many, many fungus to be picked. And I didn't have a clue, but, but um, I learned a little. And when I first went there, I was confronted with Finnish, <laughs> Finnish rye bread. And rye bread and sauna, not sauna, sauna, that's the way they say it. AU is owl. That's the way they say it, and that's the way it is. That's the one, one word that Finland loaned to the rest of the world, and everybody says it incorrectly. But sauna and rye bread 
are their main the basis for life if you like bread and one two three four five six seven days a week in a sauna most people only do one or two some do every day and it's an experience that i shall never forget it was it was unbelievable absolutely unbelievable <clears throat> and when i was on my travels in a boat we called in many many places and whenever at the end of the day wherever you docked you would pay the harbour fee and within that harbour fee gave you a, a ticket to the local sauna and you would go there take your sauna have a few beers afterwards <clears throat> and after a, after quite a few stops you met the same people there were many not just Finns there were Russians there were Swedes Germans French even and for, fortunately for me most of these people spoke English <laughs> learning Finnish is <clears throat> it's probably one of the most difficult languages in the world very very strange and actually very logical but but um, for, for us English people was difficult very difficult and I did try and I know quite a lot of Finnish words but <laughs> stringing them together in a sentence with grammar it, their grammar is a nightmare that's trust me even some Finns find their grammar a nightmare. And I, and I experienced some, some wonderful trips into the forest. And I found, I was with some friends that day and I found, I didn't know what it was, so I photographed it and it was, it was bear poo. And it was very fresh. <laughs> and um, it didn't worry me one little bit <clears throat> because I knew the rule that um, if you found anything like that, you just make a noise. Bears are, are not particularly, um, they're shy, they're shy, shy creatures. And if they hear a noise that is unaccustomed to what they're used to, then they will run away. And another time when I was on my own, I, I, I found the prints of a wolf. A lot, a lot of people there disputed it because it was so near the city. But in actual fact, it was confirmed later that it was a, a, the prints of a wolf, which I found really, that's really, wow. What an experience for a, 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 a little old Englishman. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Finns are are very shy people you don't <clears throat> Finns don't do small talk at all if you're out walking in the forest and you come across a Finn and you say good morning they look at you as, you as if you're some sort of maniac they don't do that but it's something you get used to if if my opinion is if you if you go to someone else's country then you comply to their rules that is that is surely that is basic um, basic what Not compliance. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what word I mean, but it, it is um, basic manners, if you like, to be as what as they are in in their in their country. Why why wouldn't you do that anywhere you go? As the old saying goes, "When in Rome, do as the Romans do." 
And if you do that, then most people will respect you for that. And I think in, in the most places I went, the people like me because um, I accepted them for what they are. I didn't try to impress them on what I am. And um, as I say, it was a, it was a, <laughs> it was a real culture shock. But a fantastic experience. So I would never ever give up. For, it was a beautiful place. Beautiful. Very cold at times, but they had they had their moments. They they their their um, probably their biggest thing, not the biggest thing, but Midsummer's Day was was there celebrated. It's um, It's actually not celebrated on the actual date of, of, of Midsummer. It's always on the weekend that that, that um, precedes that. But everyone makes merry, and <laughs> as I found out, the, the Finns like a drink or two, and so do I. I can identify with that. And the summer is very short. It's very short and it's very sweet. I, <laughs> I could never, um, I could never get over the fact that when you wake up at two o'clock in the morning, it's still it's light, and it's only been dark for a few hours. But a, a lot of people say there's a downside to that. In the winter, it's, it's, it's dark all the time. It, it never gave me a problem. It was the, the winters, I preferred the winters, to be honest. The snow and the cold. And the, the, the sauna is far, far better in, in, well, I say that, I say it's better in the winter, not necessarily. When I was on my travels, um, I was invited to a sauna and you have to book a time. You only get approximately an hour. And the, 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 the sauna is already a light. It's a wood, it's a, it's a, a poo sauna as they call it, a wood, a poo is wood. It's a wood sauna. And um, there's no showers. But very, very close by is a is a lake. And that's where you wash. When you come out of the sauna, you go straight into the lake. And that is an experience that um, is nice. It's a nice experience. But probably one of my best sauna experiences was in Espoo. And it was winter, and outside it was minus minus twenty four, I think, something like that. And we we were all cosy in the sauna, regular people who you get to know. And um, I suggested that we go outside and roll in the snow, and I was surprised that, that people took me up on it, and we did. And that was. A nice experience, really, really nice. To come from a to come from a sauna that which is close on a hundred centigrade, out into the cold and the snow, at minus twenty four, and then rolled in the snow. But it's not as you think. It's quite, it's actually very, very invigorating, and you feel like you have a new lease of life. <laughs> and, I, and I did have. That was my new lease of life. Very, very fond memories.
many, many memories that I can't even begin to explain. <laughs> By the way, their TV is crap. <laughs> <laughs> Mostly. And they have rock bands. But when I say rock bands, I, I don't mean like status quo, I mean like heavy metal. That's, that, that is the Finn thing, heavy metal. And they love it. And I don't know if you remember, but um, some some time ago, in the past, the uh, the Finns won the Eurovision Song Contest with a group that were, to to us at least, um, totally outrageous. But the Finns the Finns lived on that <laughs> for a long long time. They won the Eurovision Song Contest. I can't think of the name of the of the group now, but it was pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who I mean. I, I, I can't think who they who are called now. And then you had who was the who was the girl that was on one of our talent shows, if you like, Sarah Alto. She she was finished girl. Who found fame. Good luck to her. And and Finland is is is, is it's a wonderful place, and I, I would recommend anybody to go there, even if you just see Helsinki. Forget London; it's nothing like London. Helsinki is. Mind blowing, beautiful place. It's their it's their capital city, major city. And um, wandering around there one day, there was a there was a a tiny little um, Vietnamese, wouldn't even a restaurant. It was like a, a little tiny bistro, with no more than six or seven tables. And they had Lohi Kieto, which is salmon soup, for five euro, which is five five pounds for the want of an argument. And you, you could go into there and you would choose your table and you would go up and help yourself with a little tiny bowl to salmon soup. And when you got back to your table, there was water bread and a salad. And if you wanted more, you'd go back and get more. And it was really nice, really beautiful. A nice, simple meal made by nice people trying to make a living. And I had many meals in not just Helsinki, in <clears throat> Where I was staying, um, it was a little Chinese. I think it was Chinese. I'm not sure it was Chinese or Vietnamese. A little restaurant, and and they mostly do like a, a buffet meal, where you just literally go in and help yourself for like eight eight or nine euros, and you can eat as much as you want. But it's it's. Um, I find in England some some restaurants you go into are very intimidating. You feel socially outcast sometimes. There, I didn't. I never felt like that. It was a. It was. I don't know. I can't. I can't describe it. It's a different. A different. Different world that everyone should experience once in a lifetime. And I loved every minute of it. And my only regret is that I will probably never be able to go back because of because of the rules that will will come into force. 
but that's that we that remains to be seen no one really knows I was, I was lucky enough to know people that um, took me under their wing, if you like. I think my first, the first time I went, <clears throat> the first time I went to Finland, I flew. And um, I was befriended by a, a, a few people. And I, I, I was asked if I would like to go on, on a fishing trip. And of, of course, I jumped at the chance. Yeah, 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 I do, sure. But it, <laughs> it wasn't, it wasn't the fishing trip I was thinking of. I imagined going there with a rod and line and and um, fishing in a pond, if you like. But when we went to this. Um, I can't think of the name of the place. It's, it's gone from my head right now. But it was, it was around an hour's journey from Espoo. Way, way out in the country. And it was <clears throat> the, the people that took me. It was, it was her parents' summer, summer cottage. <laughs> and when I say summer cottage, it was massive, beautiful. It was um, a log built construction. Th there's enough room there for perhaps five or six people. Very cozy, very nice, beautiful place. And, and from there, you walk down to the lake. And when I say the lake, the lake is like it goes into square miles, massive, absolutely massive. And you go down a hill to the lake, and right down at the lakeside is another little cottage with its own sauna and facilities for doing everything. And we we, we got there, and no one spoke <laughs> no one spoke any English, and I certainly didn't know any Finnish. It was all hand gestures and grunts. <laughs> there were um, one, two, three, one, two, three, five, five of us, one Englishman and four Finns. And um, they, the, the day previous, or a, a, a few days previous, they had been there and laid nets in this lake. And we, we were going out to take up the nets. And um, <laughs> I was asked to row the boat. That was the gesture I got. And I thought, oh God, I've never, I think I've rowed a boat once in my life. And um, that was... <laughs> That was a strange experience with these four guys. One of them had big gloves on. He was he was lifting nets and taking the fish and and whatever. And that was a a, a wonderful experience that sticks in my mind. And then <clears throat> this is very broadly speaking. But then my my um. I'm not sure of my second or third third trip out. I decided to drive. I drove from England to, to Finland. That, that was an, another story and another experience that I'll never forget. <laughs> and the assistance I got from from the phone. And I've just remembered the name of the place. It's called Lochia. I won't try to spell it. And I went back, but this time 
It was winter. And this time I was I was just with a close friend. And he said we were going ice fishing. Okay, so I imagined ice fishing as as drilling a little hole in the ice and then putting your little rod. But yeah, we did we did actually do that. But the main event of the day was to lay nets under the ice. And that was quite an experience. I I I was uh, I was amazed at how they did that. And the first thing the first thing they did was to drill four holes, drill a hole this big in the ice, and then one maybe a meter away. And it was uh, you ended up with four holes a meter apart. And then you take a saw, a big saw, and saw between the holes. So that you'd end up with a, a great big cube of ice that you could push down in the water or lift it out to make this big hole. And the ice is like well over um, 300, meet, 300 millimeters, more than that. And then you would walk <clears throat> forward on the ice for maybe 10 meters and you do the exactly the same thing and then you had these rods that went under the ice to feed this line that went to the other hole and then when they were joined up then you'd lay the nets in between it which was um I thought are, are they really going to catch anything here in, in the middle of the winter and the next day we went back just just me and this other guy dear friend and um <laughs> we were pulling pulling in the nets and there was little tiny fish like perch i think they were freshwater fish pulling and pulling and pulling and i could see that the, the the guy i'm with he was struggling to pull this net and all of a sudden this fish came into view and it was absolutely massive it was a pike and it must have been three foot. It was three foot long and massive. And I, and I took photographs of that. But the, the, but the person I was with, didn't. He, he thought that was bad news because it ruined the nets. It tangled all the nets. It made holes in the nets. And um, we, 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 we got this pike on the ice and hit it and ki killed killed it and then took it back and gutted it and it was a shame because it was a, a female and it was you could tell it was a female because all the eggs in it and it was just it just seems to me a, a, a great shame but that's that's the way the cookie crumbles that's the way it is and, and going back to I think it was a few days later we went there, but we went ice fishing with a little hole. And you had a little tiny rod about this long. That's all you needed with a little reel. And you dip that down and, and I caught maybe three of these little tiny perch. And the guy we was with was, his name was Curry. K-A-R-I, Curry. He was in his eighties. And he knew exactly what he was doing. He must have caught 30 or 40 of these little perch. Brilliant. <laughs> By the way, they have they have a Lidl's in Finland. Same brand, same people, same people that run it, but the prices are somewhat different because of their their tax their tax system out there is um is geared to uh what is basic and what is luxury you have the tax system where the lowest taxes are on things like bread milk eggs all the essential things very very low tax 
that as you go up a scale and end up with, with alcohol is extremely expensive. I think, I think um, a pint of Guinness out there was like eight pounds, maybe a little more. And spirits were extremely expensive com compared to it to the rest of Europe, actually. Most of those Scandinavian countries, they, their, their prices are ex really expensive. But as I say, it's a social country, not a socialist country, but a social country. They base their, their system on helping people that are less fortunate than others, which is that's a good thing, surely. Mm. And I'm just rabbiting on because I've had a drink. Mm. And just trying to relate my experience in a different country that not many people go to. It's um it's worth it's worth noting that uh Finland had, you have to bear in mind that Finland is in a very um, difficult situation where they're living between Sweden and Russia. And Sweden ruled Finland for many, many years. And they basically tolerate each other. <laughs> until there's an ice hockey game. And it's a, that's a different ball game. And they had, this is, this is worth looking up on the internet, which is really, really interesting, that the, the Winter War of 1939. I was never taught that history at school. But that was a fascinating brief but unfortunately, Finland didn't win the war. They won the they won this particular battle against the Russians, but they lost the war and they lost a good part of their country, good Karelia, which has never been returned. It still belongs to Russia. And probably their greatest leader of, of Finland is Mannerheim. Total respect for the man. Great leader. And um, I'm probably talking rubbish now. Probably been talking rubbish for the last half an hour, sorry. But um, I guess it beats politics. <laughs> that's that's the problems with 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 getting older. You, what do you do? You talk about politics, which is you, you think you can see the way that our lives are being steered. And um, it's, it's not a pretty sight. We're in, a, we're in a time now which is very, very, very scary. Very scary. Things are happening now that seems to be, I can't put my finger on it, it seems to be building up for something spectacular. Who knows what, I don't know. Maybe not. Strange times for sure, very strange. And, and where do we go from here? That's the question. What happens now? Is there going to be, as they say, a great reset, 
a great big reset. Is that going to happen? Maybe, maybe not. We seem to be between the devil and the deep blue sea with things as they are. Some people believe one thing and some people believe another thing. And in, in truth, no one actually knows. No one. You can only guess. You can only guess what is going to happen. As always. But it doesn't seem to be a good situation that we're heading into. Or maybe not. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? It's a funny old world, as they say. It's a funny old world. And people change, and people... People come to believe exactly what they're told. And I'm afraid that uh, you should never believe what you're told, especially, especially by a politician or a banker or an insurance agent or someone trying to sell you something. That's a, that's a big thing nowadays, is tr people trying to sell you something. Everything you look at, there is adverts, unless you pay extra not to have adverts. But there is a little trick to YouTube, because you'll probably notice that if you listen to a video that is quite long, you have three or four advertisements. Well, there's a little trick is, if you start the video and then go right to the very end, to within five seconds of the end, and then backtrack, then you won't get any adverts. I know that because I've tried it. And, um, and. <laughs> I was going to mention the weather. We are the 21st of May today. That is 10 days until the beginning of June. And the weather is pretty dismal. It's Gale force winds, raining, uncomfortable, and cold. Not as you think May to be. May is is um, is normally a, a beautiful month. In fact, um, There was a, a novel written some some years ago called The Darling Buds of May, which is about to reappear with with um, someone else's parlarking. Mm. Well, there you are, and that's the um, end of my. Call it what you want. Reminiscent, if you like. I've been to Canada. I've been to Spain, Tenerife. And to France. And when I was driving, I drove through France, Belgium, Poland, Germany, Denmark. Sweden and Finland. And Finland was my favourite. Oddly enough, there's, a, there's another little story there. When I when I drove to Finland from 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 here, I loaded my van with all my tools, all my clothes most of my possessions in the van. 
and I drove. I drove to Dover to get the ferry. And for some reason, um, I got there an hour early. And they said, oh, your, your boat is is not until the next one, which was two hours or something later. And the guy just said, don't worry, just get on it. And I got on the boat, drove on, and there were probably less than 30 people on that boat. And we arrived in France, in Calais. I drove off the boat and I never saw anybody. No, no customs, no immigration, nothing. And I drove straight off and onto the motorway. Wherever that was, I can't remember. I had a rough plan where I was going to and I think I had sat nav. And I kept driving, I kept driving and driving and driving, as you do. And um, eventually I got to um, Hamburg. <laughs> yes, I did have, I had sat nav, but it wasn't built into the car. It was, a, it, was a, it was one of those portable, portable things that weren't, it wasn't very, it wasn't very efficient. It's okay when you're in rural areas, because it has time to decipher the stuff from the satellite. But when you're in a major city like Hamburg, it can't keep up. So as you're driving, it's giving you instructions that are like two streets away. And I, <laughs> and I you, you, for a kickoff, you're driving on the wrong side of the road. Everything is on the wrong side. And I'm driving and I turn down the street and I could see all these flashing lights and they're obviously cameras. And I, and I managed to wander down one way street. And I'm, and I'm still looking for somewhere to, to stay. And with the assistance of a friend, um, I ventured upon this place which was like a, um, like a, um, a YMCA hostel, if you like. And I thought, this will, this will do, this will do nicely. And I walked in there and no way, no way was I staying there. It was, it was like all the undesirable people you'd ever met in your life, all in one, one little group. And I just went in there and I said, no, thank you. And I walked out and I, and I slept in the van that night. And that was a small van. It was very uncomfortable. I could just about lay down. Anyway, another story. And then from there, I went to uh, Germany, um, into Denmark. And as you cross Denmark, you come to the Olsen, Olsen, is it the Olsen, the Olsen Bridge. That's something else that goes into um, I can't think of a city in, in Sweden. Malmo. The the Olsen Bridge goes for, it, I think it must be 20 or 30 miles long, this massive, massive bridge. And right at the very end, it dips under the sea, because that, that is the, the shipping lane. Dips under the sea and you come out the other end. And you pay your fees at the end of the journey, not the beginning. And of course, being a right-handed driven car, when you pull up to this, 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 it's not manned, it's all automatic. So you, you've got to put your credit card in or whatever card you've got into this machine. And, and I'm on the wrong side. So, oh, shit. So I know what to do. There's no one, there was no one there. So I, I drove up and turned around so that I'm, on, I'm facing the wrong way now in this little booth where I'm trying to... And of course, it's all in Swedish. I didn't understand what the hell was going on. And eventually, eventually, I made <clears throat> made sense of it and paid my money. By which time, other people have arrived, and are right up close to me. <laughs> so I've got a, I got, I paid my stuff, and then I've got to reverse out of there to go where I want to go. And and I think my point of, of this 
this exercise, if you like, was the fact that I travelled with a van, with all my tools, from into France, into Belgium, into Holland, into Denmark, and it wasn't until I actually got to Sweden, I was stopped by a, a, a nice young lady policeman. And I, I just said, you know, would you like, would you like to, to search the van? She said, no, no, I'm just interested. You, you have an English registration. What, 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 are, what are you doing? I said, well, I, and I just said, I'm just, I'm, I'm on a trip. I'm going to work in Finland for a little while. Oh, great, yeah, yeah. I said, do you want to see in the back? No, 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 no. I'm just interested in what you're doing. Now, bear in mind that this is the time of terrorism. I could have been, had anything in my van. Could have had guns, explosive, anything. And I wasn't stopped. And then eventually I got to Stockholm. And um, my, my, my ferry, if you like, had been paid for by a friend. Now, bearing in mind that when I cross from England to France, the journey is 90 minutes at a push. And that costs around 120 euros for the van and myself, or whatever. Just, just for that. When I got to Stockholm, I boarded this luxury liner, if you like. It was, it was no, that was the only other word for it. It's a luxury liner. And um, there was a, it was an 11 hour journey. So you're traveling, I think it was night, yeah, it was night time when I, when I, when I came into, um, Finland. Excuse me. And I boarded the boat, parked the van in, in wherever you, in the wherever you go, and I made my way to my cabin, which was deep in the bowels of the ship pretty scary really but you but to be honest it was such a peaceful beautiful journey no no waves nothing just you wouldn't even know you was on a boat and you, you came down for your evening meal and it was incredible I just I just did not know where to start I had to ask the, 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 there was a lady there and I said excuse me I said can you help her? Yes, can I help you? Yeah, I'm just wondering, you know, where, where do I start here? She said, oh, <laughs> this, is the, um, this is the hors d'oeuvre. This is the, the starter. This is the main course. This is the, the, the um, dessert. And then there is white wine, red wine, beer. You just help yourself exactly what you want to help yourself with. Brilliant. Now, I must admit, I got quite drunk. On, on red wine and beer and had a beautiful meal, lovely meal. And then I went to my cabin, quite drunk. <laughs> and it was a it was a, 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 a double cabin, but it was just me. So I set my alarm for whatever it was, six o'clock or whatever. And my alarm went off, had a shower, went up for breakfast. And the breakfast was the breakfast of kings. Absolutely amazing breakfast. And had breakfast, relaxed a little bit, gathered my things together and departed from Teraku, which is a Finnish port. And that journey cost 99 euros. Amazing. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. And that was the Viking line, or as, as, the, as the Finns say, the Viking line. Beautiful memory, lovely. And going as you, I, I can't remember 
going, but on the way back, I remember it was daylight and, and, and the different that the fjords and the, and the, the, the topography was a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful country. And then when I, and I got off the, the boat at Telaku, I drove to Forsa, which is where I was working. And I had made friends there too. And that was also a, a, another nice experience of, of meeting different people. And, and, and a lot of the a lot, a lot of the tradespeople there were women. But in actual fact, they they all were women. All all the tradespersons were women, <laughs> and they were very very good at what they did. And I found it a little bit embarrassing that I had to ask a woman how to operate some of the machinery in there, which I wasn't familiar with. But well, she was good. And she said to me, do you fancy a drink when you finish work? I said, yeah, sure. And we went for a drink and we made friends. And she came here to England with her little boy. Mm. Anyway, that's enough of my nonsense. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye.